Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the YouTube channel. I am John Kurtz. Please click subscribe if you have not. If you are into college football and specifically right now, conference realignment, you're going to want to do that. I have multiple videos per day coming at you right now. And also, like this video and comment. It really helps me out. I try to be honest with you. It's going to help me out. It'll get me more views and it'll get you more and better content, by the way. And it's college football. We love to talk smack. I don't care if you tell me I'm wrong. I don't care if you tell me if I'm an idiot or if you tell me you love me, that's awesome too. But just please do like and comment on the video. So today we're discussing Big 12 options here. What can the remaining eight teams do? And a Dennis Dodd article from CBS Sports really outlined some of these. He put three prongs really into this plan or three options that the Big 12 could go with. I would say two are pretty widely known at this point, and we've talked about before here on this channel. One was a bit interesting, and those are some expansion candidates that we'll get to in just a moment. But also we have pods. Dennis Dot lays out pods if it were a Big 12, Pac-12, 20-team conglomerate merger. And I'll be honest, I'm jealous of seeing all the SEC pods, right? Talking about Texas and Oklahoma going over there, how they would organize that. That looks really fun. So I'm excited to do that here with you to outline what the pods are that Dennis Dodd threw out there. But first and foremost, here are the three things that he laid out as potential options for the Big 12 now. One would be leveraging the American Athletic Conference, pulling in some of their members as a part of expansion. And this gets very interesting because Stuart Mandel brought up TV numbers not that long ago. He's from The Athletic about how the American and the remaining eight teams in the Big 12 really are very similar as far as TV draws go. They were sobering numbers for the Big 12. It was about a 90,000-person difference in terms of who was watching the eight teams of the Big 12 versus who was watching the American Athletic Conference. But the kicker is the Big 12 still has that Power 5 status, right? And that matters. So hopefully you would have leverage there when the time came to go grab teams from the American. Now, the second option is what's been talked about already a lot this week on this channel because the Big 12 and the Pac-12 commissioners, they each met for a combined six hours. Great first date, it seemed like, between the two, though no real information came out of that, and Bob Bowlesby didn't tell the Big 12 ADs about much. But still, it's a start. And so there's a potential merger on the table with the Pac-12, or it could be combining TV rights. They're discussing, hopefully, and it sounds like legitimately some of those options. Now, the third was very interesting here from Dennis Dodd, and that was calling BYU or Boise State to discuss their interest. Now, I know expansion has been talked about, but you don't hear BYU and Boise quite as much. The Big 12 went after BYU or it discussed. I shouldn't say went after. The Big 12 discussed BYU back in 2016 when they were looking into expansion. And at that point, some LGBTQ groups got in the mix and really dissuaded the Big 12 from going down that road. Now the Big 12 is more desperate than they were in 2016. Does that change things? I and mean, that opens up a whole different can of worms and a whole different discussion that I don't want to get into here right now. But it might change things, I would think, for the Big 12. That might make them more willing to listen or explore that road. And Boise, I mean, frankly, I just don't know how much interest they would really have in the Big 12. I'm not familiar enough with Boise's situation right now. But if I'm the Big 12, I'm absolutely making that call if you decide that you want to go down the road of expansion because it's obviously it's a good program nationally known brand and if you give them power five resources which i imagine would be better than what they're getting in the mountain west even in a de depleted and beleaguered big 12 what happens to that program they could really turn up from there now if it were going to go to the pac-12 if it were going to be this 20 team league dennis dodd did lay out what he thought the packs or the pods would be and you've seen this in the sec there would be like four pods for sec teams if and when Texas and Oklahoma, I guess not if, when Texas and Oklahoma actually do enter the league. So here's what Dodd lined up for the Big 12 and the Pac-12. Pod one would be Cal, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State. Okay, that makes sense. Basically just up the coastline there. Pod two would be Colorado, Stanford, UCLA, USC, Utah. So you're able to keep UCLA and USC together. You throw in Colorado and Utah, which are a little further inland and then Stanford gets lumped in there as well I guess that probably should have been included with UCLA and USC so you're hitting what like Southern California there along with Colorado and Utah a little more inland and pod three is Arizona Arizona State and the three Texas schools from the big, from the big 12 Baylor TCU and Texas Tech which makes some sense you want travel partners if you're coming from the big 12 the three schools in Texas combined with two from Arizona which had been rumored to be at least, hey, maybe the Big 12 should go after them. Maybe there's some kind of a link there. Big 12 never seemed to really pursue Arizona and Arizona State. Hey, maybe that was a mistake in hindsight if they were actually pluckable, but now they would be here in pod three. And then finally, pod four would be the rest of the Big 12 holdovers or leftovers. Iowa State, Kansas, 
Kansas State, Oklahoma State, and West Virginia. So it's familiar enough, right? So that's the point here. You keep these travel pods together so that teams have travel partners and they wouldn't have to get too crazy with their travel arrangements. Now, the only thing I would say here that is different that I would make a change with is West Virginia, because I just don't see West Virginia going really in this scenario. And this is something that will be treacherous for the Big 12 if it plays out. If West Virginia were to go to the ACC, what happens to the, the other seven teams in the league? Are they still able to hold together and band together? Is that still going to be a conglomeration with the pack? Then the numbers get all screwed up, right? If you have 19 as opposed to 20. But like, here's the problem with West Virginia. I mean, one, the ACC rumors have been out there. It makes sense because of geography where West Virginia is at. And it sounds like, I mean, the president of Clemson has a connection to West Virginia. Like, there are some things that really add up there. West Virginia has a strong football and basketball brand. They're the only school in the state. I would think that would be a reasonably attractive option, at least at some point to the ACC. The kicker here is the travel budget for West Virginia. If West Virginia is going to be going into a league with the Pac-12 and the Big 12 where the payout is going to be less, which the Pac-12 payout is already 5 to $6 million per team behind the Big 12, if it's going to be even knocked down a peg or two from that, a couple more million dollars for West Virginia, it's not going to make sense for West Virginia to be traveling even further, right? Because they've already been traveling a ton for the Big 12. Now you got to make some trips all the way out to the West Coast if you're going to play Stanford, if you're going to play UCLA, USC. And we're not just talking football. We're talking about the non-revenue sports, and that's where things get really difficult. I do know West Virginia's travel budget was already over $3 million per year in the Big 12. I think it's unlikely they could withstand doing that for any kind of relationship here with the PAC. Now, I guess if they don't have the ACC work out and there's literally no other option, maybe you do have to suck it up and deal if you're West Virginia there, but I think that's going to be one of the roadblocks. Now, something you could do is insert Houston instead, which is something that I've seen a lot, them being linked to the Pac-12. To me, that's kind of a sleeping giant. And if you're talking about Big 12 expansion, it makes a lot of sense too, because it's a huge school. It's had the label of a commuter school. Houston people now will tell you it's starting to shed that somewhat, but massive school in a massive media market. That's a top 10 media market. And obviously they've had some success here recently with football. And hey, we would bring Dana Holgerson, uh, former West Virginia head coach, back into the fold in the Big 12. So maybe you just swap out Houston in that fourth pod. Maybe Houston goes into pod three with the other Texas schools. You'd have to do some tweaking and rearranging there. But it is very interesting to look at what that would break down to be. And honestly, for all the teams involved, it's not wildly different from what they're dealing with now. Yes, it would be different, but at least with the pod system, it wouldn't be anything too crazy. So I still think it is more unlikely than likely that you see something like this play out. But the fact that we had that six-hour first date between the two commissioners at least keeps that door open right now. And I'm here for some fun speculation about what this could look like. We'll continue to do so here on the channel. Multiple conference realignment videos coming at you per day. Click subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Like and comment on the video. I would also appreciate that even if you disagree. What do you think here of this system? How realistic is it? And what are the best options for the Big 12 and the Pac-12? If you're a Pac-12 fan, get in there. I want to know about what you think there too. Thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you soon.